Welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with strong old strength and conditioning. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to scale to your very first pistol squat. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Go ahead and get into this one. All right, like I said, today we're gonna to be showing you how to scale to your very first pistol squat, or you could use this as a way to polish up your pistol if it's a little bit sloppy and ugly at times. So this will be a way that you can refine different pieces and parts of that pistol to help make it a more solidified pistol squat with good quality form. So what we're gonna do is take a top to bottom and bottom to top approach and meet them in the middle so that we're breaking down the movement into multiple different ranges and building strength through those ranges. And give you a little bit of tips here and there to help you actually get there a little bit smoother with more strength as you go because that's ultimately the overall key is our stability and strength in our foot and our hip working together to stabilize that unilateral leg work there. So that's a big important one for me. I really, really appreciate unilateral leg work because they don't hide any of the weaknesses that we have or any of those uh, downfalls that we have from side to side where we might be compensating in bilateral work. So pistols are an important exercise for me and other single leg work you could build off of this as well. Ready? Without further ado, let's go ahead and start taking a look at the drills that you can use to break this movement down. All right, so we're gonna start by building the very top movement of your lunge. Start by measuring one foot length away from the wall and then place that measuring foot out in front of the other. From here, you wanna practice hinging and loading the hip well. So our goal here is not to sit on the wall, but to lightly touch the wall. And we're simply practicing again, loading the hip, initiating the movement from the hips here and creating an opportunity for a lot of stability from the hip and foot. Now I wanna see that my knees maintain a good alignment. They're not caving in toward one another. There's not a lot of wobble and I can keep a fairly direct path from reaching my hips back to touching the wall and driving them forward. Now if you're struggling with keeping the knees in good alignment, you can add a band as a stimulus to kind of create that inward pull for your body to resist. So naturally your body will want to keep the knees away and open from one another a little bit more. And this is a way you can kind of cue that using a small mini band around the knees if you're having trouble with that stability initially. Next, we're gonna to start to add some depth. So place a bench back behind you. You wanna start seated on the bench to make sure you're far enough away with one leg at about 90 degrees. You're gonna place one leg out front so the heel's in line with the toes, and we're performing a negative to lower ourselves to the bench. So we wanna keep that leg straight as possible as we lower down and control that lowering portion. So when we get to the bench, it's not plopped. We wanna make sure that it is a controlled lower and we are really making sure that it's a smooth lowering. Pressing up with both feet to stand back up each time and reset. So we're using two feet to actually help ourselves back up here. Now from there, we can actually add a band to assist in both directions and stand as well as sit. So now I'm taking some of the load off using that band and I'm working on getting both the eccentric and concentric portions together at that depth. So use a light band, whatever you need under the armpits here, anchored at about chest height on the post to help pull yourself back up. Continuing to progress this, now we're gonna take the band away and actually use both directions without the assistance. So this is our goal ultimately, is to be able to build strength and stability to the point where we don't need that band anymore and we can uh, just simply rely on the strength and stability of our leg here to do both the sit and stand. Now we wanna make sure again that we're not plopping to the bench, but we're also not using momentum to stand up. It's a clean press through the leg that is helping me stand up each time. And finally, we wanna to start to add some more hip flexor activity. So we lift the leg off the floor. We can add the band back in to help us in this new uh, position as it increases difficulty a little bit more. So anytime we need to help 
through range of motion and we add a little bit of difficulty to the movement, we can add that band to help aid in it and help get us through that. Now we want to start to build from the bottom up a little bit as well and I like to start with just a band anchored at hip height behind the knee. So here we're getting some flexion gapping of the knee so we're a little, little bit of mobility work at the same time here. But I want to push up into a balanced position. So here my butt is off the ground, I'm simply holding this balance. The band is actually pulling my knee in the direction that we want it to go and my ankle. We're testing both my ankle and knee mobility here. And I'm just holding that as long as I can. Now when I feel more comfortable with this, I'm going to actually start to play with being able to press up from that bottom position. And now that we have some work from the top and from the bottom, we're going to start to try full range of motion pistols using, again, a band to assist. So if you need more assistance, you do a little bit heavier of a band here in this uh, setup. So again, the band's at about chest height. I have it under the armpits around my back. And now we're practicing the full range of motion pistol, testing that range of motion out and relying on that band to assist through the movement. Simply greasing the groove of the movement and getting that pattern down is going to be beneficial all the way through. When the banded assist becomes too easy, now we can add a counterweight and a plate out front. So it's not necessarily the load, although there will be some because you got a plate. This is a 25 pound plate, but I'm using it to counterbalance. So that's why I'm reaching out front. And you can reach further toward the toes if that helps you as well. I think I'm almost trying to touch your toes to the plate. This will also help with your hip flexor strength in that bottom position. And as you come back up, pulling that plate back in. So this is our next step right before being able to just do a plain old pistol without any assistance and making sure that you got your first one down all the way here. All right, and there you have it. How to scale to your very first pistol or how to break it down to refine the pistol you're currently able to do but solidify it a little bit more if you like this video make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend maybe they are currently working on their pistol maybe they've got it down but they want to refine it a little bit pass it their way share the love if you're somebody who's struggling with a training ache or injury that's keeping you from being able to maybe do a pistol or train the way that you want to with the intensity that you want to, what I want you to do right now is drop down below in the description and fill out a coaching application for a mobility blueprint call. This is our opportunity to get on a Zoom call together so that I could take you through a bit of an assessment, gather all the information I would need, and tailor a program specific to your needs. Once I have all that information, then I can lay out in full detail what that program is going to look like, the duration, the number of sessions per week, the equipment you needed access to, how I'd be coaching you through the process, how the program's delivered, and the cost of the program and any of the installment options that I can offer you around that. So if that sounds good to you, what I want you to do right now is get that link, click it, fill out that application, and schedule your call. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it does not get better than that. Welcome to the Strong Old Army. We'll see you next week.